Hello, this is LJ Boffo, and this is a video on Microsoft Excel data sets and data ranges and how to name them. So this, uh, this video's concept should work regardless of what operating system or computer that you're on. So in Excel, I've already got a file open that corresponds with a file in one of the chapters in Microsoft Excel Bootcamp. And in here, I'm not going to perform all of the steps, but what I want to do is use this as an illustration of the concepts that will help you with the steps in there. So essentially, I'm going to, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so we can see almost everything, at least the full width of this. Uh, no, actually I'm not. I'm going to make it bigger because I want to show you a couple of concepts I haven't mentioned um, in another video. In Excel, you're going to occasionally or often get tables that take up pages and pages of rows, records of information, and lots and lots of columns. You may have some core information you'd like to see all the time while you scroll across the screen or you scroll up and down, uh, i.e. you want to see a row that, if you were having it printed, would be printed on every page or a column that you'd be able to see what's important to you. So say you really wanted to see the customer ID all of the time, no matter how far you have to scroll over here, or you want to make sure that you at least see the header row all the time, no matter how many hundreds of rows you might have to scroll down. Well, Excel has a really neat tool, and let's make sure I'm in the right place for it, where you could go in and you can freeze panes. So you can actually do one at a time. You could select a row that you're interested in, like this header row, and in the View tab, Window Group, there's something called Freeze Panes, where you could basically freeze the top row, which we don't want, or freeze the first column, or freeze panes in general. So let's see if we could freeze panes where I just did that. Well, that didn't work out quite right. Now, the neat thing is, is you can come here and you can unfreeze panes <laughs> just as quickly. So let's see if I do this row, because what I want is this row to remain standard and this one to not um, be the one. However, I'm selecting the second row, and let's try this again. I always have fun trying to get this right. All right, and there you go. See? Now, what happens if I want to also freeze this first column? So I come up here to freeze panes, and I would freeze the first column. Well, wait a minute. What happened is it removed the other one. Those commands only allow you to do one or the other. And that's not good. What else can we do? So we're going to unfreeze panes, and we're going to do one more option here. We are going to... Um, oh, no, we're not using that. We're going to come here, and we're going to do split. What split does is it appears to create this sort of four panes in here. But what this does is it allows you to grab the lines that's doing the split and place them where you'd like, and then you can freeze the panes and have multiple frozen areas. What does that mean? So if I hover over this kind of weird gray line here, you notice how I get this double arrow. If I grab that by pressing my my um, my left key down on my mouse and I drag this down, below the column that I want to stay in place. And then I do the same with this vertical one and drag it over here. And then we come up here and freeze the panes. Let's see what happens. Well, that actually did not quite do what I wanted. Now, it, it, did, it did for the uh, customer ID, but it didn't quite do it for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unfreeze panes. And drag this back up here. I must have just put it in the wrong place. I'm not sure. We'll try the freeze panes again. You may have to experiment a little bit, but now it looks like that works. See what happens. So we come up here, and then we can go over this way. Whoops, and you can still see the customer ID, if there was a customer ID. <laughs> there we go. And then we are going this way. See? So that's kind of an interesting tool I just wanted to share. I'm going to go ahead and unfreeze things for the rest of what we're going to do, but I thought that was important enough to make sure to show before I forgot. Unfreeze beans. And then we want to turn off the split so that goes away. What we really want to do now is focus on the concept of data sets and data ranges. 
I mentioned that in another video, but this is a little bit more serious. I want us to actually learn how to deal with this. A lot of times what people do is they work in Excel with table objects, and that's wonderful, and we're going to get there. But you're often going to inherit things in a workplace that's kind of, that are kind of a mess, and you're going to have to do some immediate work on them before you can actually put them into a table object format because you have to do some thinking about what needs to be there and how it needs to be organized, and you just have to work with what you get. This could be an example. So first off, what is a data set? A data set is just a set of data. And in the case of Excel, it's in a, generally in a tabular format. This is a data set. What is a data range? A data range is a range of data. It may be the whole data set. It may not. This particular data set happens to now be a data range because I've selected a range of data, which sounds kind of silly. But as I've shown in another video, what if I only wanted a range of data to refer to that would be like the customer's first name and last name? It's not that I want to take this information and put it somewhere else, but I might want to find it quickly in a workbook that has several spreadsheets and I need to just find this information. So I want this range of data from this entire data set. Okay, that's great. I have the range of data. What do I do with it? because if I click away from it, it's gone, unless I find a way to go ahead and save it as a defined data range. Now, what you do that is you come over to the formulas ribbon and you go to the defined names group. And in here, I'm going to define a name for this range of data. It happens to be customer names, the first name and the last name. So I'm going to click here and say define name. Now, right now, it's looking at the very first column and it's giving a default name. But what I want to do is name this Cust Names. Or I could make it Customer Names. And the scope will be in the entire workbook. Now, the th reason for that is if I just did it for the customer spreadsheet, that would be great. But if I end up making five or six other sheets in here and then I need to refer to this, if I made this for only the work sheet customers, that's what this worksheet is named here, then the rest of the workbook wouldn't be able to access it. So the good default is, unless the workbook is so huge or you really, really don't think you're going to need it, is to just use the workbook. Make sure your entire workbook of any worksheets that you make can access it. And this is telling you where it's going to refer. It's going to refer this new named range to the customer's worksheet and then this range of data, which is B6 to C36. But it's making sure that it's an absolute range, which is why you have these dollar signs. We'll be talking about different types of, of uh, data uh, cell references in the future. But this is what is known as an absolute cell reference. And whenever a named range of some kind is going in place, wants to make sure that these are the cells that are that named range. Okay. Now, th that will be a different issue if you end up having to add to it. But right now, this is what we've got. So now, we've shown before the name box in another video. If you click the name box, and you now have customer name. And if you click that, it highlights that for you. Now, why is this a useful tool besides what I just said? What you're going to find is there are going to be various formulas and functions you're going to need to, to write or to add information into if you use the um, formula slash function builder in um, the formulas here, if we were going to insert a function, and you need to reference a certain range of data, you can actually use that in the function builder instead of going and finding what the range of cells are and typing that in or you know selecting them from your your spreadsheet this allows you to have that and you could do it and more than one time in the same data set so say i really only wanted to have the email addresses be another one so i could come here i could select this particular range of data i could come up here and define the name and it just says email add but i'm going to call it emails that makes more sense if I'm looking for it. Again, it's going to be workbook wide. 
and it happens to be located in the customer's workbook, um, cells I6 through I36, and it's making it an absolute reference so that if something changes um, somewhere else in this document, this data range will remain stable. Okay. So now if I come up here, I have customer name, there we go, and I have emails. That's great too. Now, let's take a quick look at the name manager. The name manager is good because you can look at it and you can see all sorts of things. Why is this going to be important? Because you may have to edit these. Huh? Why do you have to edit them? Well, you know why because you know someone somewhere is going to make you add rows. So say I was going to say, well, I'm just going to do B-O-T-H-0-0-0-0-0-1. And then it's going to say L-J, Bothell, and more data. I can't even spell my own name. And more data. Now this data range here, let's go ahead and, and do the customers. I'm not included. I feel very sad. No, but what's going to happen is the hard reality is you're going to be adding data and you need to be able to add to your data range easily without having to start from scratch. So here's what we do. We can go to the name manager. We can look at the customer names. And right now it's going through C36 and we want it to go through C37, or assuming we added in like 20 new names, then you would, you know, make a change there. So we're gonna to go to date, uh, cell 37, click OK, close. Then if we come up here and we select customer name, it now includes my name as well. And we can do the same thing with email. Now, the other thing I wanna share with you about data sets and data ranges is how you can work with them to sort and filter them. And you have to be very careful. Again, I'm not gonna follow the exact steps as the textbook, but what I can do is show you some, some practical work here. First off, if you're gonna do any kind of sorting of information in a data set or a range, I'm selecting a range here, you wanna select everything that is part of it in order to make the sorts and the filters workable. What does that mean? I can go ahead and select these and I can sort them all I want, but if I sort them and I don't sort the rest of the information, this information becomes untethered from the records here. And fortunately, in the current modern age, Excel has several warnings to warn you about that. And you'll have a couple of steps in the textbook to go through that. But right now, I'm just going to do the easy part. I'm going to select everything here. And what I want to do is I want to sort things by the customer last name. So I've selected everything. And incidentally, you could, I, I, I suppose, we could just go up here before we do anything else and go back to formulas, define name, and do whole table. <laughs> whole, oh, just say cust table. Cust, well, cust range. Cust range. And then we, it's selecting everything. There we go. So then if we click this, we can click that. That makes it a little easier, right? But anyway, what we want to do is come to the Home tab. And we want to come over to some basic things we could do here, which is a sort and filter. This is the Home tab editing group, and you have sort and filter. And you also have the ability in the data ribbon to have a little bit more spelled out of an area in the data ribbons sort and filter group. So right now, since we're sticking with simple stuff, let's do it from the Home tab kitchen sink tab. So I'm going to come up here. And what I want to do is I want to sort by last name. Now, if I sort A to Z, it will probably just look at the first column and do that. That's about the, the best it can intuit. So I have to do what is called a custom sort to tell it what I want to sort. And I need to make sure that my data has headers. What does that mean? Well, the header row, right? So if I turn that off, then if I were to try to sort by, it would be sorting by the column number and name. And that could be confusing. So if we make sure my data has headers, then what happens when I want to sort by 
it reads this header row. That is one reason why header rows are really important. And we want to sort by the customer's last name, and we want to do order A to Z. And we're sorting on the cell values. In other words, the information in the cell. It can be done based on cell color or font color or conditional formatting icon, but we're not doing any of that. Okay, so let's click OK. Okay, what, oops, wait a minute. I had clicked away from that and didn't keep it, so customer name. Okay, there we go. Now, this is sorted from A to Z by customer's last name. See? You can actually do multiple levels. So we're going to come here and do the same thing. So say we wanted to actually sort by the region people are in, make that a little wider, and then by the um, state. So instead, what we could do here is do another custom sort, which will end up getting rid of this one. What we're going to do is first come here and sort by region. Then we want to add a level, a second sort. And the second sort would be by what state is in that region. So we'll do this by state. We're going to also do cell values, the content of the cells. We'll do A to Z in both cases. And here we go. So first, it's sorted by region. The east region has Connecticut, then Delaware, and then all the New Yorks grouped together because they are the lowest you know, of A to Z. Midwest has in Indiana, <laughs> um, on, uh, this, and then Ohio, um, and so on. So that's how you can do that. Now, one more thing. I'm going to select all of this again and offer us the opportunity to do filtering. So come up here, sort and filters, and choose filter. And what filter will do now for us is it will sort of tie things together and put these little filter icons up here. So say that I wanted to let go of the Midwest here. If I wanted to filter out the Midwest, I could go ahead and unclick it, and then the Midwest would disappear. It's not gone forever, but if you notice that the cells... 11 through 16, which actually had the Midwest because this was in order of the region, they are now hidden. I could go back and notice here what happens too. This particular little drop down arrow has a little filter next to it, and that's indicating that it's been filtered. I could unselect all of them and then choose like the West only. And there we go. So that's essentially a few basics on what data sets and data ranges are and how you can sort them and how you can filter them and how you keep the information together. And then, of course, the all important um, setting up named ranges so that you can use that information later on when you're working on formulas and functions. I hope this was helpful to you.